Well, hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the New Construction Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Anya Kersantan, and I'm very excited to introduce my guest for today, Cameron Madlin. Cameron is a sales manager with Garmin Homes and Fresh Paint out of North Carolina, right? Yes, that's right. You guys are mostly. And um, I'm really excited to have Cameron on, on today. She, um, you know, our, our goal today is to talk to you about customer satisfaction. So I know that's a hot topic and I think a lot of us get it wrong. A lot of everything that happens is always your fault, <laughs> right? So uh, just to give you a little bit of a background, you guys probably have heard um, Elena Money's episode. Elena um, is uh, the owner of Garmin Homes and Fresh Paint, and I've had her on a previous episode before to talk about really the strength of their brand. So one of the cool things um, with Garmin Homes is that they actually don't spend money on advertising. So everything's word of mouth, and obviously they have to have really strong brand and client loyalty in order to do that. I had a chance to see Elena at this year's International Builder Show, and one of the things she had mentioned was that the journey from where they were with the customer satisfaction to where they are now, which they're proud to say they get 100% of their customers to say they would recommend Garmin Home and Fresh Paint to others, which is huge. So I thought, who better than to have a member of their team who is in a day in, day out, working with the sales team to talk to us about how they were able to achieve this result and what it takes to get there. So you guys get ready to take some notes. All right, Cameron, so thank you so much for being here today. I really, really appreciate you joining me. Um, if you don't mind starting us off by giving our listeners a little bit of a background on yourself, you know, what your journey has been, um, what kind of career path you've taken and how did you end up where you are now? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, so like she said, I'm Cameron Medlin. I have grown up around the new home industry and just in general real estate. So I've had a passion for it my entire life. Um, I had the opportunity to get into the industry the, for the time seven years ago. Um, and I actually started in the industry as an internet concierge. So I started from kind of customer care in that area, uh, managing all of our web leads, managing the website, everything like that. I quickly then moved to on-site sales and I was doing that for, gosh, five and a half years. And then I moved into this role, which I have now had for almost a year. So I've um, had an incredible opportunity to be able to be around this my whole life and know that it was a passion of mine and be able to follow it. So that's kind of my backstory, but I've been at Garmin uh, for over a year and a half and I absolutely love it. And it's just really cool to be a part of an organization like this because they just don't really exist. So it's an honor for me. That's awesome. So it's good to hear that you've been in multiple roles in the home building. So I think obviously starting from the online concierge online concierge being kind of a newer role to begin with for our industry. And that is, I mean, as far as customer facing, you know, client, um, that is like, you can't get any more than that. Right. And then you going through selling on site. I think that really gives you a taste of what your own salespeople are now going through. So you understand the struggles and everything else. So if you don't mind setting the stage for us and kind of taking us back to what your customer satisfaction looked like, um, you know, maybe where you guys got started or a few years back to where it is now. And, um, you know, what's the journey been? How did you, how did you really get there? Sure. Um, I think that the important focus, no matter what, in regards to customer care and wanting to make the best home and experience for our buyers it's always been a forefront and focus for us it hasn't always been able to make, to work out that way but when you make it a focus it can become that way so a couple years ago we just implemented new processes in regards to building schedules when it comes to releasing homes uh, we do offer guaranteed close dates which is one of the four garment differences and it makes us it helps us stand apart in the industry as a whole but with that it comes a lot of responsibility on our end because we're guaranteeing our buyers close date. And if we miss that date or have to move it out, we give them money. So for us on our end, if you're talking about profitability, you're going to want 
keep that as a focus because if you continue to closing says you're not meeting the deadlines that you're saying that you will meet and you're holding yourself accountable and so we were finding that that was something that was happening more often than it should and we um, literally almost two years ago implemented brand new processes in regards to scheduling homes releasing making sure that we're meeting all the deadlines we need to make so we do not miss GC or our guaranteed close dates um, so that was a huge huge focus of ours and then other than that the focus has always been on the buyers so that's never changed. It's always been the important part of the process for us is just building those relationships and cultivating that through our trades, our construction managers, our sales ambassadors, literally every person that they touch or interact with is a huge, huge deal for us. So that's always been there. It's just continuing to get better. Wow. Okay. So I want to take this back. So you said you guys have a guaranteed close date. I do. Wow. So... <laughs> I mean, think about like customer experience. If you can offer a guaranteed close date, I think one of the biggest fears for a customer going into the process of whether it's building a brand new house or even remodeling mm -hmm. is that you know that whatever they're quoting you is not going to happen. Yep. So you're basically removing that whole obstacle from your sales process. So I can't even imagine what it would be like to be able to say to my customer, Hey, guess what? We guarantee that the date that we're quoting you is actually the date that it's going to happen. Yep. So talk to me a little bit, how that experience, how that, um, has affected one, your sales. Cause I can imagine there's been a, a big impact on the number of sales probably, right? Just because it removes a huge obstacle from the customer experience and two how does it work exactly so if you are, are you like trying to buff in some time i imagine into it or like what if the house is ready before that date like how does it work logistically if you can talk to us a little bit more about that sure so uh the guaranteed close date in general or just our four garment differences as a whole are a huge selling tool for us in general i mean basically just because we talk about who we are. We talk about our culture. We talk about what matters most to us as an organization. And that is a selling tool in and of itself. So the guarantee close date absolutely falls into that. And is a huge, it's a huge thing for us because no one else is doing that in the market. So when you can stand behind or stand in front of a buyer and say, Hey, listen, guys, we're holding ourselves accountable the same way we're asking and holding you accountable to certain deadlines and meeting certain things. We're doing that because we, if not, we miss this date and we're not planning accordingly, we're giving you money, right? So it's a, it's a give and take and it shows that we're, we're in this with them and it's not a, it's not a, it's all on you. It doesn't fall to us, it's only higher. And that's, that's never the experience we want for our buyers. So then that's a huge selling tool for us, absolutely. Um, and then what was your second question? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so how, um, I guess the logistics of that. So if you can talk to oh, yeah. one, like, do you know percentage wise, like how close are you actually able to adhere to that closing date? Like what percentage of your sales actually settle? Um, and do you quote like the specific day or is it a month? And then, you know, how logistically, like, do you, do you feel like you have to give some kind of a buffer almost like, okay, so if we know it's going to be ready May 15th, let's quote June 15th, or, you know, what if the house is ready before the date? Like, how does that work? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. So we have our entire building schedule to start, to start to, as soon as we release a home. So as soon as we plan a home, someone goes under contract, it's all built in there. But we do have a guaranteed closing date calculator. And in that, so when a buyer goes through the contract and our team is writing a contract for somebody, they'll type in the date that they're writing the contract with us and that and their guarantee close date. So it's month, day, year, it's everything. Wow. Um, except for actually the time that you close. But other than that, it gives you that exact date and time of the month at, or date of the time of the month, whatever, you know what I mean? Okay, um, at time of contract. So that's included in the contract for them to sign off on. And in that same paragraph in our contract, it says, if we miss this guarantee close date for any reason on our end, we will give you $1,000. Wow. to hold ourselves accountable. And then it gives them the side of like, if you do anything to delay the state, this, these are the repercussions on your end. Um, so if for instance, and do we buff the date? Absolutely. So all of our schedules have like, this is the day the house should be final. And then we buffer by a couple weeks to give ourselves in case anything happens, whether it be weather related, 
trade delays. There's so many things that are outside of our control that we do try to plan for in that so that, again, we are not having to change. Uh, we absolutely move up closings if the buyer one agrees that they can move up to it and we feel confident that we can meet the date. So we always update the guaranteed close date if that happens. Like if we just blow out of the water and it's like a six week early home, which Last year, we had quite a few homes. We moved up, I think, over 40 homes we moved up last year mm -hmm. just to meet certain dates for not only the buyer, but for us as well internally. Um, and so with that, we absolutely can make adjustments. We just have them sign off on their new guaranteed close date when we do that. Okay, got it. All right, so makes sense. So it sounds like um, it is, and then what's the average time that it takes, because you guys are a production builder, right? Mm -hmm. So you... Um, and I know, so you have the two sides. So you have the Garmin homes and the fresh paint. So the fresh right. paint is more of a true production. And then Garmin, you do have a little bit more customizations, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. Okay. So is there a time frame difference that you're quoting for one versus the other? Like, what does that look like? Absolutely. So fresh paint is typically like six months or so. Garmin closer to seven, seven to eight months, just depending. Some of our neighborhoods with the Garmin world, we also buffer for the municipality. If we need to, we take all the different parts into consideration. If we have delays in permitting, just because of the influx that we know that we're facing in that particular, you know, part of the division. Um, so it just depends mainly on that as well, but it, it's all based off of the community and the product. We have everything on the community, on the guaranteed closed date calculator that would break it out depending on each. Mm -hmm. So have you personally experienced, cause you sold, um, on site for Garmin for a little bit, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. how, how did that feel to be able to say to your customers, like we have a guaranteed date compared to yeah. obviously you worked for a different builder before yeah. that. Like, so how was that in your experience as a salesperson? It's, I think with anything, with being a part of Garmin as a whole, it's a lot of pride because when you can say things like that and explain the foreground difference is the guaranteed close date to people and, and they're shocked and you to see the, the faces of buyers and be a part of that feeling of like, oh my goodness, like I've never heard of that before or even realtors, realtor right. partners who've never heard of that or for their buyer and also just from their part of the process, it makes a huge difference. And so when you get to see that, not only because they're excited about the home, but they're excited about everything else that we stand behind with the home, it's it's not, there's nothing like it really. It's a really, really amazing feeling. So it's, it's been an honor for me both on site and in this role to see it from either way, but it's really cool. So what I'm hearing you say is like, it's an honor to work for Garmin to represent. So I think alone, the feeling that you have, um, how you feel about the company, I'm sure makes a huge difference in how your customers feel about interacting with you because I bet you they can feel when you're so passionate about a company and it's not too often that you find somebody who really can be so passionate and convinced that, hey, we're the best and this is what we're willing to, to guarantee in order to prove that to you as a customer. So I love that. Um, okay, so that is, I've never heard of guaranteed close. So, you know, people listening probably like, wow, this is crazy. Um, but I can see how that would um, increase the customer satisfaction. So beyond the guaranteed date, you said, you know, obviously your, your focus is always on client satisfaction. So do you guys, um, obviously you do some kind of, a, um, uh, um, you uh, you survey your clients in order to see like what the what their satisfaction is. Can you yeah. talk to us a little bit about those surveys? Like when do they go out? Is it a one survey? Is it an internal survey? Do you use some kind of an outside company? Like what kind of questions are they asking? And how do you deal with like if anything is uncovered? So let's take the first part, the survey part, and then we'll address the the problems later. Sure. I'm sure there are still problems. Absolutely. Nobody is perfect, right? There's, that's not a possibility, but, um, so last year we were honored with the, just from our buyers, the hundred percent likely to recommend, and that was at our tabletop surveys. So those are at their closing table when they're going to sign all their docs, the attorney has that and includes it. It's a five question survey. So it's very easy, but they have a scale in regards to asking about the sales ambassador, 
the um, our preferred lender experience, our uh, the Studio G experience, and our their experience with the construction manager. And then it will also say, was your home 100% complete when you closed, as well as are you likely to recommend us to a family member or friend? And so on that question, we got 100% every single time we were likely to recommend Garment Homes. So wow. I've never heard of that ever happening. So it was a really big deal for all of us. Just all year, you wait till the very end and you're like almost holding your breath. You're like, please don't be the one, right? Like you made it so far in the year. But, uh, and absolutely to your point there, every home we strive to have 100% complete. Sometimes there's things that we're waiting, whether it be a cabinet vendor, something that we're waiting that's going to take a little bit longer to get completed. So mm -hmm. on the part where it says, "Is your was your home 100% complete? We absolutely get notes. So those things are always addressed and called out with our construction managers signed off on uh, prior to closing. So we're all on the same page and it can be addressed as quickly as possible. And then anything else, any other notes that they write. So underneath those questions, we have lines. And so we have, ha they, we have the option for them to fill out if they would call out a rock star. So one of our other foreground differences is rock stars wanted. So we call each other rock stars. So on that, we always say, if there's a rock star you wanna call out, you can call them out here. And so people will fill that out with all different shout outs, which is really, really cool. But if there's ever a comment or something that needs to be addressed in any way, we absolutely are doing a follow-up, just contact, making sure that we're all on the same page. Sometimes we know about them prior uh, because of the communication, and we make sure that with that, we're always on the same page with our team. But So we're not usually surprised, but it's, it's, um, it's a really good thing. It's a really cool thing because we, we show all those shout-outs. We have a gratitude wall here in our um, office, and we show those and talk about them and how important it is that what every single person in this organization does every day matters. Mm -hmm. And so we always like to highlight that. It's a big deal. Wow. Okay. And uh, let me ask you this. So are your, uh, is your compensation structure for the salespeople and your construction managers tied to customer satisfaction scores in any way? It's not currently. Uh, okay. at all. It's just a, it's a part of, so we have a manifesto and just in general, part of who we are as a core culture is making sure it's never losing the focus of how big of a deal this is for the buyer. That's that's a part of this process with us. And I think it's so easy in this industry, just you get into your routines, and you're like, oh, good, another sale, or oh, good, another homeowner, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But it's to them, it's not. Like, the, to them, right. it's a huge deal. And so having that continue to be a focus for every single person on this team and making sure that we're making that the best possible experience we can for them and facing every single day as it comes is – it's a big deal and it makes a big difference to each, each one of us. So it's kind of just ingrained in our culture. It's not necessarily compensated at this point, but it's really important to all of us just to, just to feel that and to feel like what you're doing every day is making a difference and that the buyer is feeling what you want them to feel. Yes, absolutely. I think you're so dead on with the, uh, what you said that to us, this could feel like, Oh, it's just another buyer. It's another day. And I think especially more seasoned salespeople, we can get into this kind of a rut of mm -hmm. feeling like, oh, whatever. And you have to remember that this is like once in a lifetime experience for your customer. And it's the first time they're hearing this from you. So every time you, from your sales presentation to the way you follow up with your customers, to the way you take them through the whole experience, has to feel like it's the first time that it is happening. You know, it cannot just be like, oh, whatever. Yeah. So, um, and one thing we know is that like when anything goes wrong in this, in the, um, whether it's sales process or the building process, especially building process, mm -hmm. it's always the sales reps fault, right? <laughs> Everything is uh, always the sales reps fault. Um, you know, I think a lot of customers are also watching the HDTV and, yeah what they see on TV versus what they actually experience um, can be quite different. Right. So I guess my question is um, how do you make sure, um, you know, how do you handle those issues with your customers um, if, if something does go wrong mm -hmm. and can you talk about, 
people that you see always doing kind of like an outstanding customer service and customers are always raving about them versus somebody who's not. And we always have those people, right? So can you kind of talk about what specifically are they doing to set themselves apart from other sales reps who are not getting those customer letters, who are not getting the praise? Sure. So I think that you kind of touched on this as well, but when buyers walk into your door as any salesperson, no matter who it is, they're expecting you to be a liar. Like there's no, no one's walking in wanting to share their story with you and wanting for you to break down their walls, right? Like they're, it's just a, it's, it's very common for people just to walk in and assume they're going to get every other sales process they've gotten or get a car salesman process. It's just, there's, there's so many misconceptions with, on-site sales or in general, what that looks like. And so I think the biggest thing just up front for our team is just breaking down those walls and making sure that people feel comfortable with not only our product, but who we are and who our sales ambassadors are. And I talk about my team all the time and talk to them about it all the time, just the genuineness that they give their buyers, whether I'm out there, whether it's they're by themselves, no matter what it is, it's just the genuine care. And they each possess that. And you can't train that. That's just something that people have or they don't have. Uh, for somebody else, for another individual. And so I think that's one of the biggest things that we are, as a team are able to share with people that walk in our door is just the genuine care and wanting to, you know, we hope that we're the right fit for them, right? We absolutely want to have the right product and the right options and everything for the buyer. But if we're not that, and we're aware of that when talking to them, the most important thing that I think my team does really, really well is just say, hey, listen, we might not be the right option, right? Like, but I'd love to connect you with we're in a lot of uh, plan developments. So connect them with another builder in there or making sure we're putting them in the right direction if it's not with us. And I think whenever you have that, not only does it build your realtor relationships, but it builds your relationship with buyers who might not have been able to buy from you right then, but they'll remember you and they'll still recommend you. Uh, so that's a, that's a huge deal from the sales process up okay, front. Let me stop you right there. So <laughs> I love this. So like, okay, you guys, how many of you are right now thinking like, oh, would I ever turn away a buyer? Like the thing is like, that's what I teach in, in my academy is that sometimes you have to turn people away. Like you have to know who your ideal buyer profile is, because if you know who that person is, you can talk to them the way that they want to be talked to, you know, you're going to be using their language. You're going to be um, tapping into their fears, you're going to be tapping into their desires and you can really sell to them. And when I say that ideal customer profile, I don't mean you're going to, um, you know, have the same gender, the same age or the same race or anything like that, but it's the core value of that person that's going to resonate with what you have to offer in, in your community. And sometimes you have to turn people away because you know from get-go that they're not going to fit into that core value and you know they're not going to be happy with their decision to move forward. Like if somebody is, you know, expecting a fully custom home and they're going for, say, a fresh paint where it's more of a production home, just because it meets their time frame, the location, maybe the budget, whatever else, but you know everything else is not going to click because they are going to be expecting a custom home and that's not where they're getting an experience at the end. It's not going to be a happy experience. It's not going to be the product that they're happy with. So what you're going to do if you don't turn them away necessarily is you're going to spend a whole lot more time fixing issues, fixing problems, apologizing because your customer is going to be constantly unhappy it's going to feel like complete drain on you emotionally and time-wise. You're going to come home being miserable, right? And at the same time, it's also going to take away time from the customers who are actually happy to be there and who are genuinely a good match for that. So I think a lot of salespeople um, don't do that, right? We're so like, oh, every single sale, every single sale, regardless of whether or not it's actually the right thing for them. Um, so I think that's a big, big mistake. Oh yeah. It can make a huge difference. And our, the one amazing thing as well is not only are we setting the tone with them up front, but if they had any questions about whether or not we were the right builder for them, our contract 
fully supports that. Uh, not only in the verbiage, but we have a good attitude addendum mm -hmm. as a part of our contract that. that basically says, hey, listen, we will fully respect you and we want to make this work and we want this process to be great, but we're all humans in this. So we're, will there potentially be errors made? Absolutely. But all that we ask is that there's respect made from not only our side, but your side as well throughout the whole process to our trades, to our construction managers, to every person you interact with. Because if we're, if we're giving that to you, we want that in return. And so I, that, that to me is another thing that also sets us up for such good success when it comes to pass the contract and once you get into the construction portion of it or even design portion of it because you've set that tone and then that just continue to be reinforced throughout the whole process yeah so if you guys want to hear more about the good attitude contract i link back to elena's episode uh, where she talks about that i love that idea so i think more builders should definitely implement that idea and even if it's not written into your contract, that is something that you can absolutely talk about because um, basically it sets the expectation that, yeah, we're not perfect, mistakes are gonna be made um, and we're in it together and, and you have to have a good attitude going into it or basically it's just not gonna work out. Exactly. So, I love that, yeah. Okay, so, and then as far as like mistakes, so mistakes do, happen like again it's not hdtv yeah. right? so how do you typically deal with mistakes like if something goes wrong whether it's a client expectation they, they thought they were expecting something and they're getting something else or maybe sales um person made a mistake like what's your do you have some kind of a um, system that addresses that or like how do you guys usually handle that sure so it depends i mean at the end of the day our most the most important thing, whether it be myself, uh, the area construction manager, whatever it is, our biggest thing with the team when talking to them about situations that might arise is, you know, who who is at fault? What has actually happened? What's transpired in regards to the communication? Making sure we're getting all the information from both sides, right? So from our side as well as the buyer side. And at the end of the day, if I ask my team, listen, what is the right, what do you feel is the right thing to do here? Do you feel like you are in the right or the wrong? And they're very transparent. And at the end of the day, if we're, if we're in the wrong, we need to hold ourselves accountable and we need to make sure it's made right. If we're not, and we need to make sure that we are having conversations with the buyers and making sure their expectations are in the right place and align with ours, then we have those conversations. But at the end of the day, our biggest thing every time is just to make sure we're doing the right thing by both sides. Because it's not, you know, it's, there's always a two right? But you're in it together throughout the whole process. So the goal there is to always maintain that respect and making sure that if they are bringing their concerns or their issues, we're addressing them in the best way that we possibly can and making sure that it is fair and the right thing to do by Garmin Homes and also by the buyer. That doesn't always mean that we can, we're not just going to give them things. It just means that if we're saying, hey, listen, I might have misled them in this way or there was not concrete answers, I can understand why they were confused something like that, then honestly, we'll, we'll look at that and make sure that we're addressing it. But if it's something that's just being brought up because of a selection that they made, something like that, that's not our responsibility. We just make sure we're having those conversations with the buyer and educating them and making sure that they're understanding that's not us. Like we're not against them. We just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. And at the end of the day, there's so many different trade vendors that are going inside, trade partners and vendors that are going inside their home every day. The mistakes that we made, but we will do our very best to address them. It might not happen overnight, but we, we make sure we're putting into place like, hey, you brought this to our attention today. We will make sure it's addressed by in seven days or whenever we can get that done. I think the most important thing with anybody is communication. So as long as you're doing your weekly updates, which our team does both in construction and sales, whether it be pictures or just letting them know where their house is in the process, you're constantly leaving that open line of communication with the buyer. They know you're in it with them. And when they have a concern, they're not like, I didn't want to bother you and you know just making sure but you've had that that line open the whole time so you're making sure that that's continuing throughout the whole process so that if something does arise it's addressed very quickly uh that's a just a big deal across all parts of our our, our business and we also make sure that we're holding our trades and our partners accountable because they're an extension of us and so we always have that trust with them and making sure that, that communication continues to be really really good so that our buyers are getting the best potential product out of this whole thing that's that's what matters yeah it's good um because i think a lot of, obviously with shrinking profits for builders it's easy to be short-sighted and just to like kind of put your foot down and sometimes you know that 
short-sightedness cost you a lot of money on the other and because it's the referrals it's the repeat business so yeah there's a there's obviously a line that you have to stick to you can't just you know give them everything they want just because but if the mistake was made i think it's a uh, right thing to admit to it and fix it and uh, make sure that your customer is happy at the end of the day because a referral business there's no cheaper way to to acquire a client than a referral so right. that's amazing that you guys are zero advertising is that right that's right that's all word of mouth all done with you know social media marketing things that we put together really um but it's there's no advertising pay we, you'll never hear us on the radio so um it's it's a really cool really cool thing that's amazing so sounds like you guys really figured it out, narrowed down, and um, I can see how your guaranteed close date definitely helps in that process, but I think it's, it comes from overall salespeople pride to work for your company and to represent Garmin Homes, and I think the customers in turn can really feel that, and that's what makes a huge difference. So um, Cameron, thank you so much for being on today. I really, really appreciate that. Now, if somebody has any questions for you, they want to maybe um, you know, ask you some additional questions on what they can do to whether improve their team's performance or their own, is there, um, is there a way that we can reach you, maybe social media, or where do you usually hang out? Absolutely. So I, um, well, you can find us on social media just if you want to find Fresh Paint. It's uh, Fresh Paint and Garmin Homes on Instagram. We're also on Facebook. Um, you can find my email address. I'm happy to give it to you. If you'd like to just reach out to me directly, I'm always happy to answer questions or in general, networking as a whole is important. And I think that we only will, we're only as good as our network and how we can actually continue to grow and challenge each other. So, um, my email is my first name. So Cameron, C A M E R O N at Garmin homes dot biz. So you're welcome to email me directly if you have questions or just want to, connect in any way I'm happy to do that so and I will be sure to link that information in the show notes for you so if you have any additional questions for Cameron and how she is managing her team um, to get them to 100% would recommend definitely reach out so thank you so much for being on today it's been my pleasure to have you and I think for all of us you know I think you're so right it's so much of it is an attitude and how you think about your customers and a lot of times you can't necessarily train that. So just remember when you're waking up, when you're showing up to work, that yeah, it may be the same old, same old for you, but it's new for your customer. So put yourself in their shoes and really approach your sales process from that same perspective. And I think you're gonna have no problem getting 100% uh, recommends. Absolutely, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, talk to you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye.